welcome back to my channel here. This is Pedro Fame, and you're watching another one. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel here. This is Pedro Fame. So I wanted to go ahead and get with you guys because I'm going to go ahead and make another video for you guys. Um, so this is going to be on the brand new MacBook Pro. So the, this brand new MacBook Pro is the 14 and 16 inch model. So I know a couple of got, people have been doing reviews on, I mean, have been putting it out there of what happened at the Apple event that recently happened on Monday. I'm going to go ahead and give my thoughts today and let you guys know uh, what I think. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the MacBook Pro and then AirPods are going to come tomorrow. So you guys can see, I'll click on the MacBook Pro. So you guys can see there is the 13 inch Retina Display M1, which is still a great computer for, like I said, for 95% of users. The rest of the 5% are going to need the more powerful M1 Pro or the M1 Pro Max. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys um, what each one is. And I'm going to let you guys know what I would choose and why I would choose what I choose. So we're gonna start off with the 14 inch. So with the 14 inch, if I'm a person who's heavily into editing, graphics, um, things like that, and I know I need something that's pretty powerful, but I don't need something extremely powerful, but I am dealing with a lot of files, like I said, I would jump up to the one terabyte model. And I know that's crazy because it's already $2,500. So it's $500 for two extra cores and and half a terabyte more and another two cpu cores so it is a, quite a good jump um the color that i would get with space gray um it just makes sense so as you can see here it has a 14 inch liquid retina display so it has the mini leds that's phenomenal they brought back all the ports the um three thunderbolt four ports along with hdmi an sd card reader and a mag port mag safe three port for faster charging 96 watts that's great. That's imp very impressive, actually, along with the Touch ID. I don't personally like they got rid of the Touch Bar, but I'm very much in the small, small, small minority of that. But I would start off with that. I don't think I would go any higher than 10 core CPU, 16 GPU. You don't really need it that much. Um, maybe if you're running a lot, a lot, a lot of files, I guess you could jump up $200. But I would say, honestly, the 10 core 16 core CP, uh, GPU will be pretty much all you need. Now, it is interesting that you can go either from one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, or eight terabytes. I would stick with one terabyte and just add a one, another one terabyte with an uh, buying an SSD. Um, I wouldn't spend the extra $400 for a two terabyte SSD because that's extremely expensive for an SSD. You, you could buy one that's way cheaper than that and just have it off of one of the Thunderbolt 4 ports. So I wouldn't pay for that. Wouldn't pay for any of their pre-installed software because more than likely I would already have it if I was going to use it. So um, I would add the Apple Care for this device because it is extremely expensive. And if something happens to it, you need to make sure that it is covered for at least that for at least that first year. After that, you know things happen. But so I would go to tech specs. There you can see there the neural code engines, how it runs, how the media engine does, how the video decoder works, and how ProRes works. So if you're working on ProRes videos off of like the iPhone 13 Pro Max that has uh, the 256 gig model, which is, which is 4K 30 frames per second, you obviously know that that eats up a lot of gigabytes. So using that with the mini LED technology in the laptop is gonna work extremely well with this. Along with the great P3 color gamut, True Tone technology. The great thing is fast refresh rates, so up to 120 hertz. Refresh rate promotions, that's phenomenal. It's great to use when you're looking at content and doing things like that. Seven, um, 11 hours of wireless web, 17 hours of Apple TV movie playback. Um, those are pretty good hours, I would say. I'm not saying they're phenomenal, but they are pretty good, I would say, for... 14 inch highly used uh, MacBook. I'm telling you, like you would have to, use, you're gonna have to use this every day. Like for me to justify twenty five hundred dollars, I would have to use this every day. This is my, own, this is how I work. This is how I live. This is how I would go about my business day to day, and this is just what I would be using. So um, that's how I would justify twenty five hundred dollars if I had to pay that. Um, 
Will I pay for any of these? No, I don't need a 14 inch or a 16 inch MacBook Pro for what I do daily, um, like in terms of these specs, so I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't do this one. I'm waiting for the Mac Mini, so if you guys wanna see my impression of the Mac Mini when that drops, I will a thousand percent be doing a video on that one, and I will be, and I will be buying it. So you guys won't have to wait, I, I'm gonna buy it. So I would trade in mine and get the Mac, the M1 Pro Mac Mini. I think I think they're gonna be two versions of it. I think that's the reason why they didn't launch it was because they're already launching these 14 and 16. So that's a lot of products, uh, hardware to drop. So they want these out first. I think the Mac Mini is either gonna drop in a press release, I would say in, in December or November, or it's gonna be waited until the beginning of next year along with 32 inch um, uh, iMac Pro. So watch out for those, um, but I will be getting the, the M1 Pro version of that one. If they do an M1 Max version of that one, it would be very interesting as well. I would not buy that one because I can imagine the price on that one has to be at least 15 to $1,700, easy. Maybe even 2,000. But the M1 Pro would probably go around 1,000, 1,100. Totally worth it to me extremely powerful foolproof for extremely long time i would say at least five years that's foolproof for and you wouldn't need anything more than that and when, and when a device lasts you five years it's worth it the m1 that i have one now probably another two years i would give it but i would totally say it is much more worth it to do the other, like, um, the M1 Pro, I'd say. I'd say that one's more worth than M1 Max. I think the M1 Max is, like, extreme power users, like, extreme heavy, heavy power users. You guys can see there everything about the specs. But let's go ahead and back up. So that's for the 14-inch. Now let's get into the 16-inch. The 16-inch is the more interesting one, I would say, because this is the one where if I had to spend... First of all, starting off at fifteen, fifteen, uh, twenty five hundred dollars just for the sixteen inch, and I don't think I would get this version. Actually, you know what? I'll tell you this: I would go to this one, spend I don't know, I think it's three thousand already, close to three thousand, twenty seven hundred, but I would up the GPU core, or the, I'm sorry, the yeah GPU core. From 16 to, no, nah, I, I think I would, no, because then that's a lot, that's the M1 Max right there. Ooh, hmm. Let's see, okay, so yeah, I would go in the middle. I would say $3,300, yeah. So I would go with $3,300, because um, I think for another $200 you can get the highest one. I don't think you need the highest one with the M1 Max. I think the lower version of the M1 Max is 5 24 core GPUs, uh, 10 core CPU. Now this is for extreme, extreme heavy users. These are people, I mean, they're working with the hardest type of software, editing, um, graphic or power is insane through the roof. Like you just need a lot. And I think this works best for them. Uh, again, one terabyte, I wouldn't add the two terabyte. You can buy another terabyte. I think two terabytes is fine for a normal user. Wouldn't buy any of the pre, pre software. Um, I would get the Apple Care for this device because I would want to ensure that this Apple Care or the Apple One is fine. And I know I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't pay four hundred dollars Apple Care Plus. I would pay the one fifty yearly. So that would be my recommendation on that. Um, yes. Let's see. So let me see if I can hear the tech specs here. So yes, I would use the M1 Pro Max. I don't think it's gonna show configurable to the M1 Pro Max, but you see the 6 point, 16 point two liquid retina display has a better has a little bit better resolution. Still the same cut kind of notch. Still everything is pretty much the same from the 14. You're just able to get the M1 Max at that um, particular price point. I would say the 16 worth it like i said i think the 16 inch with the 140 watt power adapter because you need a ton of power constantly going to that thing um to be honest with you that's like that's a mobile brick i mean that's a mobile unit right there 140 watt charging constantly 
would definitely run up your electric bill, I would say. Um, but this is the one if I had to get for a 16 inch MacBook, this is what I would get and this is what I would recommend um, for anybody getting a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Um, so that's going to be it for the MacBook Pro. I hope you guys liked it. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for me. Please subscribe. I know majority of you guys have not subscribed. I think it's like less than 5% of you guys that constantly watch my videos have subscribed. So please make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you can. Um, you're always more than welcome to unsubscribe if you don't like it. Um, but it really helps out the algorithm and the channel. I know a lot of YouTubers say it, but it is the truth. If you guys could do that for me, that'd be fantastic. Have a great rest of your day and make sure you guys stay safe.